When you hear the word carbon, you don't often think fertilizer, but what if I told you it is the number one most important fertilizer you need for a plant to thrive and survive, whether it's house plants or your garden. And furthermore, you can actually increase the capture of carbon and therefore increase the effectiveness of your plant. That's what we're gonna talk about here today. This is the beginning of the 17 essential nutrient journey where we're gonna go through all 17 essential nutrients. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Dawn Adams, a Geek Crew member who's been a part of the group for years and years. He DMs me on Instagram, he's in the Facebook group and you do see him in the comments every once in a while. He loves this series, so to be honest, as a tribute to him as being a long-term follower, I'm giving him 17 videos. He doesn't pay me a single dime, but I love you, Don, and you contribute to the community, particularly in the Facebook group, so much that my gift to you, my Christmas gift to you. Depending on how well this series does, I may release these back to back. Otherwise, if we start to lose interest, I'm going to trickle the videos out over several months. So it's based on your guys' engagement, comments, likes, that sort of thing, how this will progress. 45% of your plant is made up of carbon. And this is because it is the number one factor in biomass accumulation. And furthermore, if we look at the equation of photosynthesis, we very quickly realize that carbon goes in and carbon comes out. And because of that, it is used in nearly every process within your plant. So without it, your plant can and will struggle. What factors actually decrease carbon uptake? Well, factor number one actually is temperature. And this goes for both directions. If it's too cold and the plant is struggling to uptake water and not in an ideal zone to accumulate biomass, particularly if you're in spring or fall when the light isn't out as often, this decrease in photosynthesis, this decrease in demand actually will decrease obviously CO2 uptake. Take. So the way to counteract that would be with grow lights, for example, which is what we use usually in the spring. The other side of the coin is too much heat. And this actually comes down to the stomata and how they function, which is the main organelle in which carbon is uptaken. So stomata are found all over the plant. They're found on the bottoms of the leaves, tops of the leaves, stems. In some cases, depending on the plant, they can be located closer to the bottom as well all the way to the tippity top. So something I think you guys actually would genuinely be interested in is the fact that plants can be split up into three different groups when it comes to the uptake of carbon. And the reason for this is because they all have varying levels of stomata and they also have different ways of regulating what we call phytorespiration, which is essentially how the plant reacts to heat, light, and air moisture. So C3 is what makes up 95% of all the plants on planet Earth, and that is the ones that are able to deal with moderate temperature, moderate volumes of sunlight, and moderate levels of humidity. So pretty much anywhere that's not in an extreme. Now C4s are ones that are slightly better at regulating uh, photorespiration and are better or suited to living in spaces where sun is maybe a little bit more intense, water is a little bit more restricted, and maybe the humidity is, you know, slightly drier, for example. Now, the last one is actually the CAM plant. So C-A-M, capital, all letters, capital. And what this one is referencing are like your extremes. So we're talking succulents and cacti type. And these ones not only are obviously better at photorespiration because they're used to being in very dry, very high heat, and a ton of sun, they also are they have less stomata on them. Um, so they not only on the stomata themselves regulate better, but the plant as a whole just anatomically doesn't have as much. So this video though, we're gonna talk about mostly C3s because it's 95% of every plant you're gonna run into. In this world, every plant has a set range of temperatures where their minimum is say 20 and the highest is 25, which is actually where 
quite a vast majority of them sit as the sweet spot, the Goldilocks zone. If you're below that, you're too cold. And if you're above that, you're too hot. And when you're too hot, when the stomata open, what ends up happening is you end up losing a lot of water. And this water loss actually affects photosynthesis because if you, again, look at the formula that is photosynthesis, water is a player in that, particularly hydrogen and the oxygen for that matter, are players inside of that process. So without water, we don't get great captures and the plant themselves will actually try to conserve water when it's under heat stress because despite popular belief, plants may not have brains that we know of yet, but they do react to stimuli, so there's that. Now, the first way to control temperature, if you're indoors, obviously, you can control it pretty easily, but outside is a different story. So number one way to actually control too much heat would be through shade cloth, for example. Now, you can get different degrees of shade cloth, and you're gonna want to test different levels to see where yours land, whether you have a sensor or something to that nature that's able to detect ambient temperature, that's gonna be important in knowing if you're in that zone. It can be analog or it can be something fancier. You wanna make sure you're tracking that. Now on the other side of the coin is too cold. And if you're in this space, you wanna think of shelter belts. So things like fences or plants that are bumper crops that just kind of act as a fence around your main cash crop, if you will, all of these things that remove too much airflow or too much exposure to the world around it is going to be key. You can of course also use mulches or actually remove the mulch in the spring, let the soil warm up and then place the mulch. All of these different things will help keep that plant warmer. So that's factor number one. Factor number two actually comes down to humidity and that's ambient humidity. If the air is too wet, there's nowhere for the water in the leaf to go to and therefore the gas exchange is pretty limited just due to the general saturation in and around the leaf. Now the opposite of that is actually a drier environment, meaning when the stomata or the guard cells more specifically open up, a ton of water is lost and this can cause issues and this is going to be a common theme throughout the entire series it's how important water is to the entire process the fun fact about carbon is that the more carbon you're able to capture within the plant the higher the protein levels become and this isn't including just legumes we're talking green crops even for example the more carbon the plant is able to sequester the higher the protein content becomes which is just Kind of, it's a cool fact about why you would want to ensure that you're maximizing the results. So if we curb the humidity, if we obviously curb the temperature and then somehow adjust the light so that it's ideal either via grow lights or ensuring that they're not too shaded so long as the heat allows that, you should be in a pretty good spot. Now, the other factor that can affect plants is that you may not want too much carbon and it's obviously in the form of carbon dioxide. If you have not guessed that already. And too much carbon dioxide can actually cause a diluted plant of sorts. More CO2 with the absence of the water, with the absence of the nutrients, with the absence of the proper genetics can actually cause a plant that is lower in nutrients, which is overall poor in its quality, if you will. And if you want to learn more about how carbon dioxide, carbon, actually does decrease the nutrient content of your food, you're going to want to check out that video right there. And this video down here is what Google says you should watch too. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.